It's July the 24th, 2021. You're watching and listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. There's definitely more people who listen than watch. But um, here we are again. Um, for you, there hasn't, there hasn't been a real break for us. There has been like a two-week recording break, mm. a little summer. No longer for me because I was away. Seems I missed like one. So, so I think I've been away for mm. three weeks. So for us, it's yeah. almost surreal to be here again. Uh, good to see you all. <laughs> we have Imar. Hello. We have Adrian. Hello. And we have Jeremiah. Hello, hello. Good <laughs> good good back. Make a noise. <laughs> Oh, enjoying the good weather. I gotta wake up this morning. Wake up. Um, So, we have... Okay, um, we have a topic that Imar suggested. Because... um, Yes. Well, because why? Why did you suggest the joy of photography? I have to admit, first of all, that when I came up with this topic, I was just... uh, I felt losing my mojo a little bit um, with photographs and just not just not being inspired and I don't know why and like it's been such a long year and a half for everybody and I wonder there must be an awful lot of people out there who feel the same so why why do I feel like that I don't know so I began to ask myself what you know What is it that I'm missing? It can't be COVID. It can't. We can't blame everything on COVID. Oh, we can. <laughs> you know. We can. <laughs> we can well, not well. all of us can. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's you. The, it's the most wonderful excuse. But uh, no, that, that can't be it. You know, I mean, I live in an amazing, beautiful place. I have, you know, nothing but inspiration around me. So, like, what is it that I'm missing? Am I getting tired of my little bubble, my small radius? I don't know. So what what's my motivation? What was my motivation before? Um, Should we analyze you now? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's time for the men in white coats. I just don't know. But anyway, since I came up with the topic, I've actually had a, had a bit of a holiday. And in that I've been uh, up around Connemara for a week. And if that doesn't bring back your mojo, then I don't know what's going to. So I have to say my mojo has been restored somewhat. Um, but I really wanted to talk about um, like the motivation for me I, when I dug down deep enough was just the kind of joy that it brings me. So and I don't mean joy in a kind of a sparkles and unicorns and, you know, that <laughs> type of joy. I mean, a kind of a quiet kind of a, a, a contentment is probably a better word than joy, but a joy is a little Irish word. joy. Irish sort joy. of on the depressing side. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Less depressed. Jeremiah, you need balance. You gotta have both. You gotta take the light with the dark. There's beauty in the dark like there is in the light. I you know? know it. So um yeah, so I, I wanted to talk to all of you about, you know, what is it for you? I mean, I know some people, I know you, you're all quite techy in your, like, you love the gear. You love, Adrian clearly loves the cameras and the kit and the the speak physicality. For, speak of, for the of other two. That. Speak for the other two. <laughs> <laughs> and we know Jeremiah loves the sort of uh, digital, um, almost a, uh, augmented reality type, you know, otherworldly, almost playful? game world it, fantasy type stuff. Call it playful, maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. it really is. So, and it, I guess that's, you know, there's a lot of joy in that. Like if even to go back to your, um, the previous episode that we did with the uh, the gifts and the NFTs and the fun that you had <laughs> with that um, was just so evident, but um like uh, yeah, uh, what does everybody else think? What what is it f- exactly for you? Me, well, I can tell my story. Um, yeah. sure. You know, uh, it's it's something that uh, you know I, I I did lose my mojo probably sometime around twenty eighteen, um, and it took me quite a while to get it back. Um, and uh, part of what I got back, uh, how I got it back, was was slimming down. So you're right, I I I do like cameras a lot, but. I found I had too many and they were too much of a burden and I slimmed it right down and just focused on the photography. And so there is, so I definitely have experienced what you've experienced. Um, I think everybody's, 
everybody's solution is, is, is different for me mm. it was it was the classic and and also currently very trendy decluttering that helped mm. <laughs> you know de- declutter my camera cupboards and and thereby decluttering my brain um, and <laughs> and you know more of my brain power was was available to focus on actually making and taking photographs so mm. yeah it's it's a uh, it's it's an in, it's, it was I said it was an interesting looking back on it it was a, a, a proper psychological journey which is I mean it was it was a safe psychological journey in the sense that it was just about a hobby right it wasn't anything life threatening mm. so I'm not not, not going to go all melodramatic about it but it was yeah. a none, nonetheless it was a, a psychological journey and uh, you know glad to be at the other side of it and you know bringing right up to today uh, in the last couple of weeks I've actually been into London a couple of times and that has been for the purposes of meeting work colleagues in an office um only done it (laughs) twice so far but uh you know the the world at least my my world is opening up a bit and i might be going out to work one day a week from now on uh but both the times i've been i took my camera off its tripod where it's been for the last 15 Mm -hmm. months just being used for video in the (laughs) in the house uh, and I, I put a battery in it and I put a different lens on it and I, you know, and uh, I took it with me and I made shots in the street in London. Um, and uh, that was that was really kind of uplifting, actually, to be able to go That's out good. and take photographs yeah. in, in the city again, um, yeah. because it's always something I've enjoyed. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'd, I'd say at the moment, I think the change has been good for me so hopefully yeah yeah, when you said you've been on your holidays and that kind of helped I think yeah for me definitely a change of scenery has helped yeah and I think you know as well just when you said they're going into London and actually meeting people face to face and like there's a bit of fear in it for everybody because it's such a strange I mean just to see I was at um, a farmer's market today um and it was outside with and there was but there was a lot of people you know and people were still wearing their masks and everything but it was it's just you know all of a sudden that when all of a sudden when there's too many people there's a little bit of anxiety that starts to creep in so um it it's it's a bit more difficult to maybe relax into <clears throat> taking your photographs or just being aware of anything else other than trying to keep your distance from somebody, you know? Mm, yeah, definitely. I think that doesn't help or hasn't helped. So I suppose this week um, being away and being in such a place that's that was really sort of quite unpopulated was amazing. Just uh, that freedom and um, freedom to explore places where nobody else could bother me yes this <laughs> really <laughs> gave me a you know I was able to relax and for the first time in a long time so you know perhaps that's a little bit of what might be going on with yeah you know, no I, I think I can I think I can understand that mm. uh, it, it, as, as we record this freedom is a is a is a, a word with double meanings in in England <laughs> yes. um, because you know England uh, uh, finally released lots and lots of social restrictions um, of the legal <laughs> mandatory kind this week and the tub the tabloid press rather unhelpfully called it freedom day and you know, nightclubs yeah. opened at midnight, and people were queuing outside nightclubs that at midnight. Bonkers. And you know, and there, there's a festival this week, a music festival, which is running at full capacity. Yeah, you know, sort of forty thousand people a day at a music festival. Uh, you know, uh, so free, freedom is is <laughs> it's it, it's it's not quite a joyous word in it's England. It's a loaded this week. term for sure. It is a loaded term. Thank you, Chris. Yes, that's exactly the way I should describe I kind, it. Yeah. I kind of see it in a Darwinian sense. Oh yes, you know, it's a culling of the dumb, uninformed, disbeliever in science, etc. <sighs> Unfortunately, they'll take a lot of the others, including us, <laughs> to hit them. Yeah. But um, you know, you you. You can't fight people who insist on remaining ignorant and burying their head in the sand. No, but 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 when it comes to grown-ups and people working, I was quite um, uh, quite 
positively impacted or, or you know quite favorable looking at the people around london because you know, go although it's not mandatory anymore everybody puts a mask on when they go into the shop or riding a train i haven't dared go on the underground yet or a bus or anything like that but i don't need mm-hmm. to i prefer to walk through the city anyway but yeah on the on the commuter train i get in for you know for, from where i live that's yeah that that's very quiet people are all wearing masks even though you don't have to anymore and stuff like that so so there's a little bit of encouraging yeah, behavior um but uh yeah certainly i did feel uh an element of freedom walking around the streets of london uh keeping my distance still but it was easy enough to do uh and and having a camera in my hand uh, that felt good that felt good mm. jeremiah how about you well, I have to admit that I think uh, over my entire creative life, there was only a couple of years um, that I felt I had, it wasn't that I lost my mojo, I, I completely lost the desire to take pictures. And it happened um, many years ago when I was uh, a commercial, I, I started as an artist I was sucked into the commercial world in New York City, etc. First in Toronto, then in New York. I did a lot of still commercial work. And as that accelerated, um, I felt more and more distanced from my artistic practice. And when I transited to directing commercials at that time, um, I... I really just turned away from photography. I just was not interested in it. Of course, it was like my newfound uh, excitement about directing um, and and having the control of, you know, uh, via a crew and an imagination and larger budgets to kind of image make on a bigger Mm -hmm. level. And over the course of two years, once I settled back into directing, I rediscovered my passion for photography generally as I was prepping my commercials and would go out on scouts or traveling the world, et cetera, et cetera, and went, oh, i got to take a snap of this. And first I would be recording um, places to kind of revisit um, to make selections, of course, for the production. And I just fell back in it and never really looked back. So I... I always felt that having a photo practice in mind has taken me from very purist, you know, uh, kind of street photography through studio photography, large format, to just give me any old camera and I'll make something interesting, to, you know, the last four or five years of integrating digital work with with traditional photo photographs. And and um, evolving that space. And now with the uh, explosion of NFTs, uh, as we've discussed, there's a whole other venue to present that work in in ways that were never available when I started doing this kind of digital work. Um, But still I have, uh, you know, great passion on on shooting kind of classic. Um, I don't post them as often because they, they, you know, they remain sort of um, in the realm of printing and, and just pa- on paper, they, they seem to work better. But the digital work is really great because they don't have to worry about framing and all the rest of it. And we'll be doing a show around Labor Day, beginning of September, of, of digital work in a digital gallery, which theoretically will be mirrored. They're going to build a mirror gallery in Decentraland. So it will both be VR and real life and... Online, it's a very exciting project, and I look forward to that. So, um, for me, it's a way of of reducing my uh, the chaos that I live around, and that's just being American. I mean, <laughs> it's just so chaotic <laughs> here, and, yeah. and, and, and you know, culturally chaotic, uh, socially chaotic, uh, politically very chaotic, etc. And in the community I live in, Venice, it's also very chaotic. You have, you know, very wealthy people. People have been here for years and years in terms of every... There, there's gang members, Hispanic, homeless, wealthy, all jammed into this this uh, arena, which is very inspiring 
and it, and it you know it gives me a lot of juice to to move and yet when i walk through the community um i can be extremely alone as you guys have noticed by some of my posts and i don't encounter anybody and i end up on the ocean and or i can go into complete uh chaos all of those things are very um helpful in in just refocusing myself on the present moment. And I think when I do that, I feel much more in the flow. And so it's more, it's almost a healthy thing that I do. And that's why I've never really turned away from it. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 How about you, Chris? Mm. So for me, I do, I did have a bit of a, a mojo uh, dip thanks to the pandemic. Um, and there are two two sides to that. Well, the first side for me to help cope with these kind of things, and they do happen every now and then, um, is to try to make it more interesting by doing something new, like what we're doing here that started because yeah. of COVID. So the whole video side of things uh, has become a real interesting playing field, a real uh, interesting sandbox of sorts to play in. So that's a good thing. And then... What I did last week, um, where I wasn't here, um, is, and and I I partially relearned this because I I hadn't done a workshop in seventy weeks, wow. seven zero wow. weeks. Wow. So wow, wow. I haven't done photography with I haven't been teaching photography directly uh, in person, and what we did last week was um, we did uh, the the four formerly annual annual workshop in the old abbey in southern germany um which is uh let me show you this is the place it's a magic place oh, and um nice. it it used to be a religious place now it's just a teaching place and there's a a school kind of organization there and they have um they have a whole oops Sorry, see, mm -hmm. I haven't done this for two weeks and I forget how to press the button. <laughs> <clears throat> so, so uh, meeting there, usually it's like 30 people. Uh, it's a, an entire week, like seven, no, five days yeah. of, of photography with people. Yeah. Um, doing that again in a reduced fashion where there were only 12, 13 people there, um, but there were two parallel <laughs> classes there, one about... Uh, calligraphy and the other about photo transfer. So they were mm -hmm. doing acrylic work and photo transfer, very, very, very physical uh, photography mm -hmm. related work. So it was the, the entire the entire week was about visual arts. And uh, of course, there were rules in place. Everyone had to wear masks mm -hmm. in the house. Um, but us as a as a group, we were all vaccinated, so we could take it a bit easier. Uh, we also had additional room because the house wasn't full, so we had additional room to spread out into to kind of um, yeah make this a bit more of a of a, a safe feeling kind of affair, which it did. It felt really safe. Um, it was a really good week, and doing photography with others. I mean, Joy. This, this being, there yeah, this was very joyful. This being a smaller group than usual, we could do other things than usual, like with 30 people. This is a very rural area. So uh, if you want to go and do street photography with a group, good luck. Uh, the next city <laughs> is a small city, let's put it that way. Um, so, but with a group of 12, 13 people. That was easy enough. We could spread out there. So th that's what we did. That was the first time in over 10 years doing this workshop that we could do something like that. Mm. So that brought some change. Was it inspiring? Did it inspire you to kind of push the boundaries? Well, it inspired me and everyone. Stuff? That's the interesting thing. Because, um, <clears throat> of course, I, yeah. I brought a few things. I surprised the group with a few things. Like we did build a 4x5 large format pinhole camera, like everyone did. Yeah. So uh, and, nice. and went shooting with that. So for for... I like it when the group is, or when members of the group initially are kind of annoyed because they like, hey, what? Why are we doing this? Um, and then at the end, they're like, okay, I have to go out and shoot one more of these. Um, we did another thing that was new for people, even though it's been 
it's been left and right on Instagram. It's uh, TTV through the viewfinder photography. So take a TLR camera, mm -hmm. shoot the viewfinder, and you get like many layers and and the surroundings uh, and uh, the what's in front of the camera and a little frame inside the picture, frame inside the frame kind of thing. And um, love, I love that. None of them have done this before. Great. So I Britain. I handed out a few cameras. I asked them up front to bring TLRs if they have TLRs, and and then that that was the, probably half of the group was like, "What the f are we doing now? What? Why, why are we doing <laughs> that this?" That would have been me. I hate TLRs. <laughs> the result of this, um, the result of this was really good stuff. So they mm. brought a whole bunch of good stuff back. And um, yes, it's a bit of a cliche, but I don't care because mm. may it be a cliche, it was so much fun to do. And even the, the most skeptical, the most skeptical ones came back with a big smile on their face and we did a presentation yeah. in front of the group and everyone. Was I, I think I, pro I probably would, have been, having said I don't get likes of TLRs, I probably would have been good with that one. The reason I don't get on with TLRs is I, I, I because... Uh, it's a mirrored view. It flips and every the sides. You yeah, shift, you know, the, your composition goes the wrong way, and it plays havoc with my brain. And I get very frustrated. <laughs> I can't line up the composition I want. I know that's just a, a learning curve thing, but it just like oh, it just winds me right. So up. you should get some gl good glasses that reflect them. <laughs> so then, then you go really crazy. So, so stand so on the, my head. Yeah, that would be fine. So in, in another closing, thing that actually. Sorry, yeah, another thing that helped me actually through the week was I brought I brought with me this sprite, um, which I mentioned. Oh, your little weeks film ago. point and shoot. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. which uh, was gorgeous to have now, and I kind of tried it in lots of different scenarios. So I used it in, in a few indoor shots. I used it in some. Um, I was kind of trying different things out with that, and then. Of course, I took it out to all the rocky shoreline and stuff. So I'm I'm kind of excited to see what comes out of that now, or if I get any nice pictures because that's so that's brought you know, back a little uh, bit. Do do you guys? Um, I'm totally blanking on this group of artists, but and I, I I'm not going to go and look at the book they have, but they they're a group. They they recreate famous photographs. Um, walk on the Moon, Zeppelin, okay. you know, all these classic things, but they shoot the studio view of it. In other words, the the wide shot shows all of the lighting oh, and the yeah, yeah, fakeness yeah. of it and the plaster. <laughs> the behind, and a behind-the-scenes shot of the mm. faked moon landing. <laughs> it, yeah. They do that. And, but inside the inside of the frame is an absolutely perfect recreation, whether it's clouds with cotton. And it's fascinating. What could possibly go wrong doing something. that with the moon landing? What could possibly go yeah. wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, no, I don't. I'm not sure. I've. Seen, I, uh, it sounds familiar. I'll, I'm I'll track them. them, and and mm. I, I, I will track them. I have their book. It's they're one of my favorite groups of a collective of photographers or artists who do this work, and it's staggeringly beautiful. Apologize to the listeners and viewers that I cannot. Uh, recall them immediately but <laughs> stand by next week i will <laughs> mm. do you think that um part of the process of recapturing one's mojo is literally to just use an unfamiliar camera or device it Something, helps if you're used to very high tech stuff, get a throwaway camera. If you're used mm. to simple cameras, get something that is very uh, highly technological. Yeah, if you yeah. shoot, um, if you shoot, say, all color, make yourself shoot black and white. And, yeah. and, and all of a sudden, you, you are kind of refocusing your aesthetic brain into another, um, you know, another realm, which then will trigger other things in terms of getting you back in the flow that, that I always find is interesting. You know? That's good if you can kind of motivate yourself enough in order to kind of complete that exercise, you know. But then again, sometimes that's just, oh, that's just not going to work. But I think well, if you when, can't get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of, you're a bit in trouble. So for, for me, I was kind of thinking about the, 
Yeah, go on. For, for me, it's the actual doing, you know, the the yeah. getting my my butt off the sofa and and doing it, and the the setting in a group kind of helps because you're the teacher. You have to you have to be there. So so finding ways <laughs> yeah. to to force myself to go out while I, I might want to yeah. lean back and but. Uh, uh, if I if I find a way to do it, um, if I find a way to force myself into it, the moment I start, then it goes boom, you know. Then it then it takes mm. off. So mm -mm. yeah, I kind of with you on that, Chris. Actually, although for me, it's a mixture of what you said and what Jeremiah said, because it's for me when I've experienced it, and I mean, you know, I, I may in the future experience it in a different way. But what you know, I recall thinking, you know, uh, I have too much kit. Um, and and I, you know and that's kind of weighing me down but so part of it was you should get to get up and do it but part of it was what Jeremiah was talking about which is finding a combination finding some kit that works that breaks the cycle or or setting a constraint that works um you, one, one thing you didn't mention Jeremiah which is a, as a q2 shooter doesn't surprise me in the slightest is a new lens <laughs> Because a new lens, <laughs> you know, well, then, uh, which uh, yeah. which clearly your Leica doesn't have, or that particular Leica well, that you have my, doesn't my, support. My monochrome does. Yeah, so your monochrome does. Don't All right, push okay, it. Don't push it. <laughs> fair enough. I should, I, I'm not against Leica. I just don't have one. I'm just jealous. Um, but the uh, you know, a new lens can switch things up as well. And and sometimes it's the it's the aesthetic of the field of view. Sometimes mm. it's just, I want something small and light. Let me get that pancake lens out and put that on the camera sure. instead. You know, something like that so you can carry it with you easier. Um, but I do find a, a new lens I find can be quite effective at, at getting me back in the game because the cameras, as complex as the modern digital cameras are, sometimes you can be all at sea trying to learn a completely new camera. But a new lens on a familiar camera actually you you know how to get the camera to do you you know how to make the camera disappear out of the process right and, and you can focus mm -hmm. on what you're seeing through it so i mean that's one of the reasons phones are so interesting it is what it is yeah. i mean you uh, take yeah, it out yeah. you kind of know even with a sort of a wide medium and close and you know uh, actually no matter no matter what you're using i think what the conclusion I came to was that the moment I like the most in the whole process is that moment where I don't know if you do it as well, um, where you just kind of paddling along and all of a sudden you, you do kind of a, a quick double take that moment when you're like, "Ooh, what's this? Uh, it's just something <laughs> catches your eye. And um, to illustrate, I suppose that um, Chris, if you can pop up the picture with the tree in it. <clears throat> from I was walking along this you know I kind of went up to kind of capture what was in front of me and there was a really old uh, little ruined house and oh it was just incredible but uh, and I had been walking in one direction but when I turned around this was what greeted me and I was like oh wow and it was just that mm -hmm. that's great I really like that of, photo wow yeah. I, there's nothing really done to that at all it's just that's what I saw and what a day <laughs> yeah that, that's so, quite uh, in quite terms a day, of yes. joy this one's going to kind of hang with me for a very long time I we think. have we have all uploaded a couple of photos mm. from um the last week i think so should we should we just yeah. do a little yep. show and tell go through them do yeah show let's and do it sure. yeah all right let's start here this one is from for, the, for those listening this is on our tfop um album yeah, the, the link to the album is in the show notes. Um, if you want to type it in right now, it's tfttf.com slash tfopphotos. But it's easier to go to the description and just take the link from there. So um, that is, what is that? That's in your garden. Hey, what am I, actually? This is, yeah, so th this is just a snapshot. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, just something that is, it's, it's goes back to what Emu was saying a minute ago. This is just something that caught my eye, you know. Uh, it, it was one I took because of the textures in it. This, this is the one email where I thought I saw yeah. this and actually thought of you. I thought, oh, email will yeah. love that. It's yeah, got loads yeah. of good texture in it. That's what I do. <laughs> it's so, so the wooden the wooden bench that is is uh, that is slowly decaying in my garden <laughs> uh, for for want of a a bit of oil uh, on it. 
um, has some fantastic textures and uh, with the whatever the plant is that's growing it's through Japanese it. Japanese right? lilac. Yeah, that, that was a couple Good. of weeks ago um, yeah. uh, and it was just really nice that day. So, there you go. So, so, so saw that and thought of you. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Here it is it. another one. Oh, this one is me as well, actually. So, so this one, this is one of my gets back into London photographs. From, is, that a, uh, is that a Citroen? Oh, it Citroen. is. Yeah. So, so it is a Citroen. So, so this. Um, so, what, what are we what seeing here for those who are listening? Well, what you're seeing here is is a street scene with a, a 1970s. You know, classic Citroen parked in uh, and and the subject of the photograph, but what in a street which is uh, a, a, li a a long street of uh, brick terraced houses, <clears throat> probably Georgian. Looking at there, we should make them what sort of eighteenth, maybe early nineteenth century, possibly. Um, so you know what? Uh, uh, if it wasn't for the for the modern 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 style architecture in the background, this could have yeah. been taken in the seventies. Just the it surroundings, well, the it, buildings, yeah. the car. Yeah. So there's two or three streets like this, all in the same area. Now, now, what you, the, unfortunately, I can't entirely get rid of the modern architecture because this is absolutely yeah. banging the heart of London. It's this amazing that the, 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 the juxtaposition is uh, like this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a hundred yards from uh, the South Bank area uh, of the River Thames. Um, it's a hundred yards from Waterloo Station. Um, and it happens to be on my commute. And there's a fellow that lives along this street um, who collects classic citrons. He has about <laughs> five of them. Um, you can't see it in this shot, but behind that is what I would oh, say wow. would be a sort of late 1940s <laughs> citron. He's got a couple of the uh, the citron DSs from the 60s, early yeah. 70s, the sort of ones you'd see Charles de Gaulle you know, transported <laughs> around in. He's got one of those and an, and a, an estate or a wagon version of one of those, which <laughs> is quite rare, I think. And they're all parked on this street, which is right. How many... How many people of his neighbours he's had to beg, borrow, and steal parking permits How from to keep five or six <laughs> cars God. on the street in the centre of London? And he drives them. I saw him the other day. I've wandered about him for years because I've walked along this street for years. And I've wandered about him. And I actually saw a, a couple uh, come out of a house and get into one of these cars and drive off the other day. I, I say him. I assume it's the man that's a collector because... Only a man would be foolish enough to do this, um, and also because he was the one that got into the driver's seat. But uh, but it may not be him. It may not be the man. Of course, it might be the lady that's uh, that's the collector. Um, but I've I've walked up and down this street on my commute to the city in years, and I've of, often wondered. And the joy of this photo is that I'm back out and I'm taking photographs in London again See, as I walk about the city, you, going about my daily business. For you, the joy of the photo is that. For me, the joy of the photo is that juxtaposition of new and old. And uh, mm -hmm. just, a, just a thought, the initial thought, looking at this, it takes me to my childhood, or to the American series, uh, detective series. And uh, it looks like the, any minute now, some some detective comes out, gets in the car and drives to chase down some bad guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... Uh, Actually, they, they say that the Citroen is the best car uh, in movies for gangsters. Is that like right? It. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, so yeah, I, I, it's interesting you pick an American vibe. What you're talking about? It like made a, me think of Minder. <laughs> Minder, <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Um, that was a classic TV series. Yeah, it really well, was. Of the time. Yeah, I don't know that one. Uh, so let's. Oh, you'd like it, Jeremiah? It's fun. Let's go off into the weird. What is this, Jeremiah? <laughs> what are we looking at here? We're, okay, I, let me describe it. We're looking at a. A street, and a sunny street, the palm trees, place this somewhere <coughs> on the West Coast, I guess Los Angeles. There's La, a La, La. pipe of sorts hovering in the air. There's a, a UFO type thing and a weird <laughs> halo cloud kind of like thing hovering in the air. Yeah. And the <laughs> pipe thing in the front casts a shadow. shadow. And uh, I have, I need, a, I need an explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Uh -huh. um, this this is a a street. Uh, this is actually the very first street. Not, I just took this the other week or the other day, really. But I, I I was. This is at the very beginning of the pandemic. I would walk through this neighborhood at the very end. I'm using a very wide lens, mm. but at the very very end of the street is the entrance to the canals and and. And mm -hmm. you cross over 
a street called Ocean, and then you get into the canals, and then that takes you to the beach. Um, but I was shocked when I first walked down this street that there was no one on it. I mean, mm. it was all gone. And over the last year, you'd see a little bit. It, it None of the entrances of the homes are on the street. They're all on the kind of cross streets. So there's not a lot of cars ever parked here. But there are a few, and the other day I was there, and, there, and you can see if you look at the road, they're getting ready to repave it. So this is mm-hmm. sort of the asphalt underneath. It's very textured, and there was nothing on it, nobody there, and I was on my walk because um, I tend to walk where I can avoid people, <laughs> and I just saw this and stepped into the middle and took the frame. I just thought mm-hmm. it's just so empty and beautiful. Of course, when I got back and looked at it, I went, mm, it's mi- it must be missing a UFO cloud <laughs> formation. It looks like it's been taken from like a fast moving vehicle. Or just it looks that those lines. The just lines make it kind so of make it. Yeah, it looks like a bit like speed. Yeah, the texture yeah. in the street. Mm. Yeah, I, I, well, yeah I, I tried to create a snapshot um, of, of, a, of, a of an surreal- alternative reality of sorts. <laughs> that, that's exactly right. And yeah. uh, not, there's nothing in it that it feels o- the earth. Yeah, overly <laughs> dramatic in it. There, there's a, a blandness, a normal blandness to it, but it's very uh, hyper-realistic. Um, anyway, so yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it just popped out of my head. Reminds me of the cover of same, Tubular same Bells. With this, same with this. Okay, so there's <laughs> there's a Volkswagen bus, which has an old an old one, which has a kind of a, a thing on the back, a, a, a store kind of front. Looks like a hot dog selling stand of sorts. Selling flip-flops. Flip-flops are actually selling. Oh, they're selling flip-flops. Okay, and then there's uh, two ladies on there, I guess, that look like they come from a very different culture. Um, uh-huh. Looks like Middle Eastern. Well, if Eastern. you really look in the, they look if kind you, of biblical if, in a way. Yes, if you mm. look uh, carefully uh, in the back, that creature walking towards the back, you'll see that it, it that creature does not look human at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's all covered so, in very thick yeah. grain, yeah, yeah. so. It's, yeah, have so, these been so transported from Assassin's Creed by any chance? Well, no, <laughs> not no, quite. No, these are <laughs> not quite, not quite. Uh, you know, and and um, I wanted to create here. I, I I was walking by. I just saw the Volkswagen open. Um, it's parked next to the offices where they import these flip flops from Hawaii. So that one and is real. That's this. not an acid from an acid oh. pack that you put in there. Okay. No, it's okay. not well. So I shot that, and and it was just like a snap, um, and it just inspired me to kind of create a a frame of a film that never existed, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. like a frame that one would find on the street, kind of scuffed and marked and faded, ectochrome, mm-hmm. um, and you pull it up, and it does look like a super thirty five frame, and yeah, you gave it, it. You gave it sprocket go. holes and everything, all that, and and so the the mystery is the frame itself as an object, uh, but the exploration is <laughs> what film was this? Where did this yeah. come from? What's the <laughs> story? <laughs> um, so there's a uh, layers and layers of mystery there, and um, uh, it just kind of I don't know. So it's it's the, the the theme is mystery. Here's another one yeah. that uh, I think you also conjured I really like up, this one. which is uh, a, from a, <laughs> looking at the palm trees. This looks like a backyard of sorts, and uh, with the palm trees again, I would probably place that near where you live. And yeah, uh, in the yeah. in that in that yard, there is an um, I I would think an Inuit just coming from seal hunting. Yeah. Um, so exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, you know, I, I pa- like again. I passed. This is a little closer to the beach. It's one of those small little courtyardy apartments. They're probably one or two, one bedroom, one and a half bedroom apartments, all facing a little courtyard. <clears throat> and I actually uh, stopped, and I didn't just snap it. I actually composed it to place a figure oh. in it um, okay. consciously. Um, mm. 
And uh, so when I got back, I did you I know what figure you wanted to a, place there, or did you just leave space for a figure? I left space for a figure, but I, I knew it was one of a few that I had in mind. Are you, are you channeling? Um, are you channeling the dude here? It's got a very Lebowski feel to it. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly, the Lebowski um. home is but three blocks from the, where the <laughs> Okay, I wasn't too far off. <laughs> uh, just, just, uh, just so you know, hmm. uh, that hmm. particular house in the movie hmm. that is very close to where I live. Okay. Is that, do you mean mm-hmm. the big mansion house or the place mm-hmm. where Jeff Bridges lives? No, the place where Lebowski lives in you know in venice it's yeah but it's, is is right, it the yeah. big is lebowski. it the big lebowski or the small lebowski <laughs> yeah, um yeah. which of the two are you small talking about the small, small lebowski, lebowski. Okay. Okay. the guy that needs the new oh, yeah, rug yeah. right yeah, right. Okay. yeah. yeah. i think yeah. we have a sh- title for uh, the show the small lebowski <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, uh, then I, when i got home i i kind of faded it out just a little bit because i didn't again want to create a dramatic image but more of a uh, sort of a, a matter a of fact kind of image, image yeah matter of fact yes and so um adjusting the uh, the the fusion of these elements and and drawing the hunter hunter into the you know the environment in a, i think a pretty realistic way yeah um mm-hmm. uh, is just an interest like you look at it uh, and then you look at it again you go what them. Yeah. What am I looking at? <laughs> so um, I'm a little overdressed. It bring me a lot of joy to do this. Let me see. Are the next two ones from you too? By you too? Uh, yes. The, yeah. That one I just snapped in. That's just a snapshot of a teddy bear sitting <laughs> under uh, yeah. somewhere in in a garage yeah. under. Uh, just kind of how I felt yeah. at the beginning of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's absolutely no manipulation. This is But it does have, I, I think theme. your theme, the thing that brings you joy is putting mystery mm. in things. I think that's mm. uh, I think probably so. yeah. the thing. How Maybe about this does, one? Yeah. Well, this one is full on <laughs> surreal. This so we're, we're looking like, at a black and white uh, scene of, uh, looks like a waiting room. This is... At a doctor's yeah, it's office. a waiting room. Yeah, yeah, it's actually. Um, I had to do a blood test uh, the other day, so you know, just for checkups and stuff. And I, I went in and I went. Oh, this is a nice empty space. I, I'm really drawn to kind of clean empty space. <laughs> so the photo reason. is that the the, the 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 room is a photo, and then you placed a person of a, a virtual a robot little, cellist a robot playing cello. <laughs> yeah. In stilettos. <laughs> in stilettos, yes. Uh, you know, the trick is, of course, That's adjusting the reflections and, and the shadows. Yep, you put that the really floor in the right place to get the yeah. reflection right. You know what I mean? That's, that's the, yeah. the, the real work of it. And um, I, I, again, it's a what the... F- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little yeah, bit of that, yes. Here. So yeah, mystery so. brings joy, oh. I guess does to me mm. yeah. <laughs> all right let's i'm just gonna uh, i'm gonna share something with you which we'll put a note in the in, in the show notes before we you know no no it's just um the the, the jeremiah's word there has, has, has triggered uh, uh, a link in my brain to to some work that a friend of mine uh did a chap called animal mystery um who he he publishes a few zines every now and again and he's got one uh which i've got a i've actually got the hard copy of it but i'll put a link uh into into the show notes um uh, which is a whole zine with things that have got just tricks being played on you um let me see oh great so yeah. sort of things like things like that in a way sort of a bit like your your hunter pasted into the the yard mm. there and stuff like that so um, I will, uh, where will yeah. I put that? I'll just and and all of these I did specifically for this episode this week. Um, oh. yeah. That's cool. Oh, I feel, I feel honored. Yeah, I feel honored. <laughs> so productive. Yeah. See that you guys inspired me. <laughs> of course. In fact, I was, uh, I was going to do a screen capture of Adrian's shot here and maybe give him a spaceman. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that would have worked. Yeah, yeah. This one is, this one is Zemars, I guess. This is just is another. Yeah, oh, this is that, yeah. straight from the phone snap of just has some of my favorite people in it. And um, look at the colors. It's That was like a total happy making day. And also a not too crowded street. Yeah, which was that's fantastic. Which kind happy. of is, is a good thing so, now, right? <laughs> absolutely. It's like you've been to like Malta or somewhere. Yeah. yeah. 
So yeah, yeah, my nervousness was, you know, allayed a little bit by, but yeah, look at the color of that sky. I mean, this is Ireland. Hello, yeah. <laughs> Ireland that can be that way. Happy, yes, yeah. it can. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, look at it. Yeah, no, it can. yeah, gorgeous. That's high. I mean, one you know, always. one of the scary things is, of course, once people get out and they go like, "Oh, this is great. Let's open up," and the restaurants open up and everything's open up, the street gets crowded, and then <laughs> look what happens. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, we kind of deliberately went in early just to So this this one this this one that you showed us earlier Imar the, yes. the scene at the sea yeah. at the uh, sea with the with the tree and the blue yes. sky and the, yeah, I like yeah. the clouds in the left top they kind of I don't know they point down towards they the tree They do uh, yeah That's that's one of yeah. the safest places on earth right now cuz it's windy and it's outside and Yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. nobody yeah. else there <laughs> Not really, no. We just put the little bit of effort in to drive that little bit further, and you know, than everybody else. Because on the roads out along the coast, honestly, the cars were just parked just abandoned people <laughs> people were just screw this i'm not going to work today that's the way it appeared anyway <laughs> i was officially on holidays so i was okay but um yeah um yeah crazy i think as long as there's no bats there you're good <laughs> there's yeah. bats everywhere this is ireland <laughs> i've got bats in my backyard <laughs> yeah but you don't eat them so <laughs> oh no we don't eat them no all right. Uh, species, yeah. Okay, here's here's a joy making photo for me, because mm, and it doesn't right. look like it. It looks right. it's a it's a scarecrow <laughs> it's in a, a bit more like in yeah. a field. It's a black yeah, and it's white nice. shot. It's also very um, very mysterious. That's yeah. that's, that's what, was, what I was going for. This is actually near that workshop place near that abbey that I talked about. Um, they have a multi year project where they are building an old city um, from the 1600 somethings oh, and they wow. are building it with the methods and the tools that were available back then so there's groups of craftspeople building and uh, doing things I like 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 a potter there's a there's they're building a church they're building a big storage building and so on they're making gardens are they, they building are... a big wicker man and they're going to burn edward woodward no right? but but <laughs> but, but this, this was at this on the side of it they they all all the crafts people there wear these kind of clothes that you see there like linen clothes um and uh they and and you can visit it and pay for it and that's how they finance it by letting tourists in to uh, watch amazing. it to ask to ask nosy questions yeah. about the techniques they use and this kind of stuff and this is on a field on the side where they just yeah put up a scarecrow with a uh, weird old looking yeah so what you're garments. saying is you yeah. went to a rural place which uh -huh. was filled with a community of local people who dressed strangely and there are actually <laughs> people from all over europe who, who work there so it's a huge it's huge it's big um so that's the photo that i thought would tell a bit of a story and then it did, yeah it did give me like a kind of horror movie vibe I, I i went does, for that that's what i was going have, for yes yeah. a bit little of bit a, of a blair witch yeah that thing works going on there it really works yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then that's the photo I brought up earlier. This is just just a joy, joyful little snapshot of a laptop screen full of these through the viewfinder oh. photos. So um, everyone in the group was proud of what they've done. And these are the results. And that just having yeah, that as a little really cool, memento actually. that gave me that's joy. Lovely. The fact and, that you can yeah. go, I can, the fact that you can go out and run a workshop and have a group mm. of people come together to to. Uh, to practice and celebrate the joy of photography, I think is, is awesome. It was, and, uh, it was just a very joyful. So week. easy to take it so easy to take it for granted in the past, but now that sounds so like easy. pure pure yeah. luxury. It is yeah. worth uh, the the feeling was worth everything that we went through to get to that point. Um, and then last mm -hmm. but not least, the aerial shot of the Abbey, because uh, I ended up um, uh, flying my drone and. I haven't done that in a year, so it's mm, wow, one it's of these. Nice. Yay! Why not? Let's take a <laughs> let's take an aerial photo. So that's our joyous like photos. It. Great chat. That's our cool. joyful photos. The joy of photography. I mean, ah, it's good. It's good. That is good. That and you know what? I think I'm all inspired again after <laughs> just the week away, and then just listening to everybody else. And you know, you know what? If we 
can we get to the highlight part? Because my highlight is a low light. And this is part of... The pick of the week? I think. Yeah. Yeah. And let's go straight to your pick of the week. Um, here is a Verge article that is titled, Head of Instagram says Instagram is no longer a photo sharing app. What? Yeah. So it's, it's becoming me. TikTok. Oh, hold on. I have to... Oops. I have to put it on the screen. Just, just keep talking as if nothing happened. I'll like the on. whole, the whole sort of. Um, I think Instagram was really important for me in just kind of bringing me back into photography after being away for it for a while. It kind of giving me a motivation to kind of engage, but it's just become impossible. And like all the lovely people that I know on there are kind of lost in this sea of rubbish <laughs> and it's just it's a chore to go into it anymore and now this new um announcement is that they're just sort of the the byline kind of says instagram is focusing on becoming tiktok yeah pretty much yeah hmm. so like what's the point i well, it's love interesting. Yeah, I, I need somebody more photography that's actually you know what when i when i had a little look into this and what people were saying about it that seems to be the general consensus that twitter is now the place to go but oh i don't know i think we need somebody to kind of redefine oh, like I have this kind of nostalgia for the way it used to be and the kind of community that used to be there before they sold out um, it was a really lovely place to be. Uh, yeah. don't you think, don't nothing you think, like it. I don't well, think. we all know who I, it I, belongs I, to, you know, that kind of... Yeah, sh sure. you, should, you should have been warned, I, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, There is that, but it, you can really restrict it based on who you follow and only see that, right? Yeah, but you still get the ads, you know. Those are, those are the most like, unnerving yeah. thing there, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's just, it's you know, it's constant and it's every, oh, it's just become such a chore to, to find the people. You know, I, I wouldn't follow millions of people anyway, so it's it shouldn't be that difficult for me to navigate my way through, you know, my own feed of people. It, 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 the, just, the, oh. As with all of these things, over time, the, the signal to noise ratio yeah. uh, just gets worse and worse and worse over time sadly i think it would be lovely if somebody kind of came up with a new platform or a new kind of space um that kind of would take us back to you know go back i don't know how many years <laughs> seven eight years on <laughs> back and to Instagram the love was of a photography lovely place to be mm. yeah and that you know that those were the kind of people who were in there then well in, in my experience anyway so i but, remember uh, when instagram was, first started out i was working away from home and lovely. i even went to a couple of instagram meetups yeah so did you i know, when yeah. it was independent and and stuff it was people amazing, would meet yeah. in a pub in the evening with their cameras and chat yeah. about stuff and things like yeah. that. So. would yeah. you pay for an ad free version yeah probably yeah, I don't. I I, 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 not unless it radically changed to improve the signal to noise ratio. Well, it would be. Yeah, because you'd only pay. Well, for you'd be controlling you, it yourself. Your, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your your group. Although I don't know, as it kind of besmirched itself now, I'd prefer to just. Yeah. Kind of it it's not what it was. It's they, they lost, you they, they lost your trust. So yeah. Getting trust yeah, back yeah, is yeah. much harder than so uh, losing trust. You'd love to see kind of an independent platform well wait, tell you what we could up. do we sh shout out to the listeners uh, and the viewers to, to send us Hello? links to uh <laughs> yeah. to, i guess what was photo sharing services and sites that, that fulfill ema's description there something that's more about <laughs> the photography something. and more yeah. about the joy of photography um so it'd be, it'd be nice to to have a uh you know a, a list of new communities to try out Yes, right. I am a Flickr fan, but I have to say their app is just yeah. The, I'm piece I'm of crap. I've been a Flickr pro member forever, but <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the, me the too. interface me too. I don't yeah. use it anymore. The user interface yeah. isn't that uh, yeah. It's rubbish. Anyway, it's really is. Jeremiah, you shared <laughs> something. Leonard Misson. Leonard uh, Misson. These uh, are some of the most. Amazing photographs. I, I think Emer's going to like these. They are gorgeous. I, aren't I, they? I just think that um, they're they're just amazing. He's from the, the those photos are from the 1930s. 
They're they're just wow. magic. Oh, they really are, aren't they? There's you know, definitely are, a sort of misty glow about it. Yeah, them, isn't right? Right? Yeah. City, cityscapes with people yeah, and a misty glow. A lot of them are 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 really street photography. They look a bit like etchings or something, don't they? From illustrations, yeah, printed beautifully. They're highly mm. manipulated, I think, with burning and dodging, as I recall. And oh. and um, but they are. I, I just find some of the most incredible street photography. That's art. Oh, That's that. real art. Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. Wow. And uh, I, I oh, thought uh, to, to discover one's joy of photography, you're somebody who found it in the most simple things, Gosh. working with much more difficult equipment than we have. Oh, wow. Uh, and creating things that are just, they're painterly, but they're mm. very photographic as well because they do celebrate light in the most they do um, indeed. subtle yeah. and it's beautiful light. ways. beautiful, isn't it? So this is someone who really has and does How did you discover me, him? You know? Mm. Um, you know, I, I can't really remember. I have a little file whenever I come across something or somebody mentions someone. I'll just make a note, throw it in a file, and then every once in a while I'll visit that file and oh, bring it up and do a little bit of a deep dive. And um, I think that's what happened uh, with uh, Masson. I, I, I just... I had heard about his photographs, or I was. Tr look at this. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful image. They That's all are. Nice. They all are. They all yeah, are good. Yes. Yeah. So he, definitely one of my favorite photographers. Um, and I just thought I would share this with the rest of our cool Thank listeners. You. <laughs> so yeah, definitely want to watch. Um, want to look at. The link is, of course, in the show notes. Adrian, you brought us a Fuji link. I did. So uh, this is something that has contributed to my joy of photography in, in uh, the last few weeks. Uh, so uh, a, a, unless you are a Fuji camera user, you may not know that the, there's, an, there's a huge amount of uh, flexibility and, and a large number of parameters you can play with in the JPEG engine. Uh, so much so that uh, one person, uh, or maybe more than one person by now, has dedicated themselves to, to developing what they call Fujifilm recipes uh, to the point where there is, uh, and this week, uh, this is my pick. Uh, it's called Fuji Weekly, FujiXWeekly.com. Uh, and and uh, there are a lot of uh, settings that you can program into your Fuji camera uh, and save as custom settings to give you particular JPEG looks. Um, the, the strangest thing I find about this is, or the irony behind it, is that this is all about Fuji cameras and the vast majority of the film simulations that people have constructed recipes for are Kodak films. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there you go. And, and uh, just just to, to, to live the dream, as it were, uh, the, anybody watching the video of this, uh, I am broadcasting today uh, in a variation of Kodachrome. I, um, I was the, wondering the what your colours, uh -huh. what had happened to your colours. Uh -huh. uh, the, well, the the actual well the the the, the Kodachrome recipe uh, it has a specific uh, daylight and color curve setting. So you're setting you're setting a, a color tone curves and luminance tone curves and uh, white balance and uh, probably a few bits uh, dynamic range and a few other things all through the JPEG engine. I was wondering what had happened to your camera. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, does it work with? Uh, could I apply those? It says available in the app store. Does it only focus. work with Fuji, or could I just uh, apply it to any it, camera? It appears. Any it appears image? it's just for Fuji's because I I yeah, went ooh. It's Fuji. <laughs> Built into Fuji. Just, yeah, it's, I wonder it's, if such a thing exists for Canon. I I I don't. I'm it not aware of should. one. Um, the. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is, but it is. This is just for Fuji's because you need to have it's. It relates to the the firmware and chip yeah, it runs on the from the processor that's built mm. in and so on. So yeah, definitely. And some that of the more like modern ones you can't now. use yeah. on some of the more complex ones you can't use on older Fuji cameras. So you have to know which Fuji camera you've got, and then there are a list mm. of recipes that are achievable through the available parameters you have on your camera. But but, but all the techie stuff. Is there's cool. a lot of a lot of film emulation software for every manner of camera and uh mm. you know generically or otherwise that are plugins for lightroom 
Photoshop. Yes. Uh, oh yeah, all or, good. Or any any of the others. All, all, are, all good, and even for video with things like you know film yeah. convert and stuff like that. Of course, yeah, sure. if, if you're into video, um, this this one is just something that was part of my joy this week, so I thought mm. I'd share it. <laughs> so, as uh, we mentioned earlier, sometimes it's a it's a new camera or a different, not familiar camera, a new piece of gear that can spark the joy in photography again. And for me, um, I was I was kind of forced to buy it. I didn't <laughs> want to, but um, it's, it's over here. Um, it is my new little drone. Oh, it's a little it's, baby one. Isn't, isn't, it, isn't it cute? Isn't it cute? <laughs> it's, it's really so nice. And it's, I, have, I have one of those too. It's, it's, I love it. It's the, it's the DJI <laughs> Mini 2. Which is uh, the the 249 gram sub sub 500 gram uh, yeah. sub 250 gram uh, drone, and the reason I had to buy this is because the one I had before, which is like now four, four, four or five years old, um, doesn't well. Can't it will it. It, it, it will <laughs> fall out of the uh, European regulations that have started on the first oh. of January, which means um, that yeah. certain drones cannot really fly because they have to have certain features that um, that one doesn't, and yeah. it will be a one or two uh, year grace period, and then it'll fall out. But pretty much, oh. I I just it, put it on eBay, it, and it uh, took the. So your old one is the is the seven three seven of of the... drones. Then <laughs> no, it's not. <clears throat> the, the old one was a, was a Mavic Air, <laughs> and this one is the. It's smaller. It has the same camera, the same sensor. It is it's the same image quality. Um, but it doesn't require, it only requires registration. It doesn't require a license. It doesn't require uh, like the advanced stuff that the bigger drones do. So um, mm. it's and easiest it one to fly. And it took that um, aerial shot yeah. that yeah, you yeah, showed us. Yes, yeah. yes very, that was with that one. I mean, really good quality. Yeah, that, it's something decent. That's for something so tiny, you know. There are better ones, but this is, this is perfectly fine for what Easy. I needed for. It's pretty good. Yeah. What's fun with those drones and uh, is to fly them really low, like maybe six inches off the ground, like yeah. a dolly shot, kind of point of view, yeah, you know, rather than high, even yeah. and to do stuff that's low. And at that size, even indoors, like you can get really smooth dolly yeah. jo dolly shots indoors with this. Um, wow. I have the protectors. Yeah, the cage uh, for, the for, the, for the propellers, yeah. Yeah, for indoor shooting, I highly <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> so, in yeah, case any squirrels get in the way. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to bang this against the walls. Um, I think the drone will probably survive, but your walls will have marks. So, Anyway, yeah, that's a good, point. good like point. That's a new, <laughs> let kids a new play fun injection toy for me. The, the old mm. one is on eBay. It's being sold right now. So I'm just... Uh, oh. Swap, swapping over to a new one. Um, yeah, sure. I guess that kind of wraps this episode up. Um, I'm happy to well, thank hear you, from everybody. all of you that that you had a bit that 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 your joy has kind of returned. Um, <laughs> maybe also the week break that we had, or maybe two weeks in Adrian's case of, of the show yeah, here, has helped help. to make that this helped. a bit more of yeah. a. Relaxed. Oh, well, I'm certainly hurt. glad to be back. Def yeah, yeah, definitely glad to be back. Yeah. Oh yes, me too. Me too. It's uh, <laughs> it's been too long. So, um, yeah, that is it for this week in the future of photography. We'll be back with another episode in a week from now. Um, and every everyone out there, check out the description. We have links to all the photos that we have talked about. And uh, yeah, just okay. check it out. Yeah, it's cool stuff. Until next time. Bye bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Bye.